Hi everyone, I'm Cheryl Butler, and you're listening to the Mighty Mommy's Quick and Dirty Tips podcast, which will help make your life as a parent a little bit easier and a lot more fun. Welcome. Today's episode is number 609, Six Sanity Saving Tips for Parents of a Child with Special Needs. Because parenting any child comes with challenges, but parenting a child with special needs amplifies them. Based on my own experience raising three children with developmental delays, I have six tips for managing the stress and keeping your sanity. One, make self-care a top priority. Two, cultivate a positive mindset. Three, stay connected to family and friends. Four, create schedules and routines. Five, declutter and organize your environment. And six, make time for nature. Being a parent is both a privilege and an incredible responsibility. When our children are newborns, we care for all of their basic needs. As they grow, we watch them reach milestones like learning to walk, talk, read, problem solve, and interact with the outside world. It's a monumental undertaking. There are countless days when being a parent is incredible. There are also endless times when it's exhausting and straight up difficult. It still blows my mind that I've been raising eight precious human beings for over 25 years, including three with significant developmental delays. And although those delays posed parenting challenges, navigating through them was also the most gratifying time of my life. With the right mindset and stress relief tools in place, parenting a child with special needs can be fulfilling and just a little less energy draining. First, before I offer you some sanity-saving tips, here's a word on the language we use to talk about children with special needs which can be a sensitive topic for parents. Merriam-Webster defines special needs as any of various difficulties, such as physical, emotional, behavioral, or learning disability or impairment, that causes an individual to require additional or specialized services or accommodations, such as in education or recreation. For the two decades I raised my children who were developmentally delayed, it was common to hear them referred to as special needs children. Today, we know that a child's condition doesn't define them, and we've changed our language to reflect that. We say our precious little one is a child with special needs rather than a special needs child. Of course, being understanding when people don't know how to refer to your child is also important. A friend of mine, who is the school psychologist at our elementary school and also the parent of a child who recently died of Rett syndrome, has great advice on this topic. She says, It doesn't matter what term you use, as long as you use it with love and compassion. I've never taken offense to anyone who cares, and most people do care. And that's from Tara Reddington. So here are six sanity savers and strategies to make your day-to-day life more manageable as you love and support your child. One, make self-care a top priority. When you're the parent of a child who has significant challenges, it's crucial to create time in your life to care for your personal needs. The Child Mind Institute explains that parents may be headed toward caregiver burnout if they don't care for themselves. Their article, Why Self-Care is Essential to Parenting, says, The consequences of chronic stress related to raising kids who have intense needs are real. Studies show that parents of children with developmental, psychiatric, or learning disorders are far more likely than others to experience anxiety, depression, insomnia, fatigue, and marital problems. Of course, this is easier said than done. Your schedule is chock full of appointments with therapists and specialists. Your child requires extra attention throughout the day, which doesn't leave you time to 
keep up with the laundry and the dishes, never mind soaking in a hot bubble bath for a bit of respite. I remember the drill well. At the beginning of my journey with my three kids who were severely language delayed, I felt like I wore a red cape all day long. I didn't stop to eat, shower regularly, or even sleep properly. Then I got sick with a whopping case of pneumonia that landed me in bed for two weeks. It was then that I realized that life could go on without me managing every aspect of the daily grind. I learned quickly that taking care of my own physical and mental health was essential if I was going to help my family thrive. I share some strategies for finding time for yourself in five ways that selfish parenting can benefit your family. My favorite way to make extra time for clearing my headspace and getting excited about each day is getting up earlier than everyone else in the house. Whatever extra time you make, be sure you devote it solely to yourself. Sip tea, soak in a hot bath, curl up with a book, but don't let yourself be tempted to fold laundry or put away dishes. Protect your me time. Two, cultivate a positive mindset. Parents who are raising children with challenging needs require a positive outlook more than ever. I love this definition of positivity explained by Kendra Cherry in Understanding the Psychology of Positive Thinking. She says, Positive thinking does not necessarily mean avoiding or ignoring the bad things. Instead, it involves making the most of the potentially bad situations, trying to see the best in other people, and viewing yourself and your abilities in a positive light. Practice putting positivity into your daily life. Here are three easy ways to get started. One, you can practice gratitude. Keep a daily gratitude journal or begin your day by verbally saying three things out loud that you're grateful for in your life. Two, practice positive self-talk. And this is a biggie. When you catch yourself saying something negative, dismiss it immediately and replace it with something positive. And three, Read positive and inspirational materials. Spend some time each day reading something that encourages you to feel inspired and uplifted. Now, my number three tip is stay connected to family and friends. Don't be afraid to share the news of your child's diagnosis. The support from a close circle of family and friends is essential for parents of children with a disability. I didn't share our children's delays with my close network because I felt I could manage the load alone. Eventually, though, I opened up about our challenges, and then I was embraced with overwhelming love and support. I was so sorry I waited that long. Once I stopped isolating myself, I met one of my closest friends through our resource department at school. We had kids with similar disabilities, and we were able to lean on one another through good times and bad. And best of all, we were able to celebrate our kids' milestone victories together. Twenty years later, we still have a close bond. Number four, create schedules and routines. One of my favorite words in the parenting vocabulary is, well, right after I love you, is routines. My routines are one reason I was able to raise eight kids so close in age. If not for these sacred rituals, I'm sure someone would have found me crying in a hidden corner in my house. I believe routines are vital in creating a calm, productive, and less stressful home environment. With our numerous therapy appointments, visits by in-home specialists each day, and caring for the rest of my family and household responsibilities, our routines were crucial. Children naturally crave boundaries and schedules, but many children with special needs need them even more so. Before my three young children had the language to express themselves, they relied on our schedules and our routines to help them know what to expect next. Because we were consistent, they soon began to thrive in our everyday activities. I have some helpful suggestions in 
how routines will improve your life, and how to establish a daily routine for your family. And an important thought, routines aren't born overnight. When formulating the groundwork for a new family routine, you need to think small to make your new lifestyle something manageable and not overwhelming. Focus on establishing a single, straightforward routine first, and then grow more from there. Number five, declutter and organize your environment. We had an in-home therapy program for our three-language delayed kids. And for nearly three years, this entailed having two or more speech and occupational therapists in our home five to seven days per week. That meant that most days I couldn't stroll through the house in my bathrobe or be the least bit indiscreet because we always had people from outside our family circle in our midst. Releasing that pent-up burp was definitely out. Although these wonderful specialists soon became like family members, I had to maintain some sense of decorum while they were guests in my home. The only way I was able to stay sane was to purge and declutter regularly. And actually, it was so therapeutic. My favorite decluttering plan is the Cone Marie Method by Marie Kondo. Her book, The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up, explains how to use a category-based approach. Her philosophy of only keeping things that spark real joy is a fantastic concept. Simplifying your everyday surroundings will add more joy and less chaos to your life. And number six, make time for nature. My last tip here is the one that was life-changing for me. A parent I met through a monthly playgroup, the mother of a child with cerebral palsy, suggested connecting with nature as often as possible. Getting outside and breathing in the fresh air, or just sitting in your backyard listening to the trees rustling in the woods, is good for the body and spirit. As a society that spends so much time indoors and connected to electronics, Many of us miss everyday opportunities to clear our minds with a gift readily available, Mother Nature. The article, How Nature Can Make You Kinder, Happier, and More Creative, cited several studies that provide evidence that being in natural spaces, or even just looking out of a window onto a natural scene, somehow soothes and relieves stress. As I mentioned in my first tip about self-care, I try and take advantage of waking before the rest of my family. Several mornings each week, I use this time to take power walks near the bay. The days that I begin with these inspired walks, those are the days that I feel I can conquer almost anything. If you have a child with special needs, how do you make it all work in your home? Join the conversation and share your thoughts on the Mighty Mommy Facebook page or Twitter. You can also email me at mommy at quickanddirtytips.com and listen and subscribe on Apple, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. I am so glad you tuned in to listen this week, and I hope you'll join me next week for five smart reasons your kids need goals for the new year and how to help them make them. Because learning to set goals is an important part of growing up, and it's a learning responsibility for children. It helps build self-confidence and teaches perseverance. So helping kids set goals is key for achieving success, both inside the classroom and out. I'm wishing you and your family a great week. And until next time, happy parenting. Happy parenting.